Come here. Come on. Come on Hi, in. Friend. Come on in. Hey, why don't you sit yourself down? Yeah, have a seat. Come We're on. so happy you're here. Yeah, we actually have uh, something uh, to tell you. Uh, welcome to the party. Woo -woo. We're releasing an EP in like uh, about three hairs. I mean, like uh, a minute or something. As soon as this silly little video's over. Uh, thanks for tuning in. See you on the flip side. We're gonna do a short little interview time and talk about uh, making of the album uh, right after this. Enjoy your listen, partner. One, two, one, two, three.
Will it be this kind of pharaoh? I'm just wondering what to know. How many arms are left so wide? Cups so running full. I did the turtle dove and all the wind. Who loved her voice to sing? I fly off to further fetches. Not a day.
That was one. That was amazing. Yeah, yeah. Good shit. Yeah. I'm proud, boys. Did we do that? I think so. <laughs> where uh, where did we do that, Scott? Maybe you could tell the fine people about that. Oh, uh, well, it's a private recording studio on the northeast side of town, over off of uh, William Street, I believe. What was it, Vancouver? Somewhere in that area. And uh, we were fortunate enough to have my good buddy, Tony Olander, do all the mixing and engineering work for us. So big shout out to you, Tony. Thank you. Woo, yeah, Tony. And uh, the first song was Hard-Headed Woman, written by that guy, Reed. Yeah. So, you know, like, what was it about, or like, what was your inspiration well, like? Well, I was thinking about it, and it was, I've always been very much into the blues, and it's pretty much, I mean, the main verses of the song are just a, of a straight 12 bar blues with just a little bit of a variation at the end um and most of the blues songs are kind of about heartache and so that song is pretty much about heartache um, a personal experience um yeah but i also wanted to make it i didn't want to make it like straight ahead blues i wanted to make it a little bit more jammy a little bit more psychedelic, a little bit more to my style. Yeah. Um, so I had a little... Or a reed, like, gotta have a bass solo in there. Yeah. <laughs> it's, not a, it's not a reed song, but a bass solo. That was kind of cool when we were recording that because it's like a big, kind of like jam situation, but at the same time it's like studio, which is kind of different. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, it was like a, kind of like a live recording. It was much more... This recording was much more live recording than the last time we did it, it was, it felt like a little bit more broken. Yeah. But correct me if I'm wrong, we also like, we had a couple like riffs, we at least like planned out some of it. Right? Yeah. We're like, well this is how this beginning riff goes, you know, this beginning part like opens and then we had like a certain number of hits and a certain number. Yeah. We yeah. roughly planned. Yeah. Was that one, do you remember, did we have the metronome on the whole time now? Yeah. Yeah, 200 from beginning to end. Even through the jam part there? 200 the whole time. That was almost a one take. Yeah. <laughs> right. But like the solos were live. Yeah. And like that was like all one. All the entire, most of the entire take is just one take there. Mm -hmm. There's a couple punch that things. I did, but not too many. Pretty much it just all one straight run through. Yeah. There's always a couple guitar fucking fuck ups. I mean, you, double, you also doubled some parts later, you know? And some other stuff like that. Yeah. It was a really fun time in the studio. Mm -hmm. It was cool. Yeah, Tony did a great job. If you're interested in the studio, the studio, you can let us know and we can connect you. It doesn't currently have a name. Nameless. But uh, our buddy Tony, uh, Tony did a great job. Tony used to be in a band with Scott. Bamboozle. Bamboozle. But, um,. We also got uh, my buddy Jack Yaguda to do the mastering, and uh, he did a great job. He really kind of made it all sh everything shine. Really come together. It was a long process. We did these recordings back in November, and um, it's been a long time kind of going back and forth and like really kind of working on them. And we got a couple more, you know, we're doing like seven more tunes are going to be form this entire like 10 song long album so this is just the first three songs of like a uh, 10 song series but we rec have already recorded five other ones um no yeah five others because then there's eight yeah so we've got eight total recording we got just like two more we're gonna go to the studio and do but there's always a couple more little bits but hopefully before the end of the year we have this entire 10 song album recorded but uh, yeah, the second song is uh, Living on the Run, um, which is very much, you know, very much a love song in, in many ways, which is kind of rare, at least with this band, we don't have very many songs about love, but uh, very much wrote it for my girlfriend, but of course, uh, it's actually really a song about me, classically. <laughs> love you, Emily. <laughs> um, <laughs> But he can only talk about himself still. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that going on. Um, no, but really it's the story of a person who has decided or who wants to 
kind of uh, have a certain lifestyle rambling, being out there, you know, meeting different people and having uh, kind of a loose, open relationship, finding someone or something and feeling a little lost and then kind of finding someone or something that kind of seems more important uh, than just kind of wandering or going around. Yeah, we can say aww right there. Aww. 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 But uh, that one was cool. We actually, I remember when we were recording this one, well, we did a bunch of different vocal takes. Tony kept uh, being unsatisfied with the uh, the record quality of the recording of the vocal. So we did that a bunch of times. But this was one where we actually, we turned off the, um, we like had the click going until a certain point, and then we wanted the jam to kind of be a little more open kind of thing at the end. Kind of Which it kind of succeeded in being. Like a live sound. Yeah, a little more like live there at the end. So then we like had him turn it off. And there were a couple times, maybe this was with different songs, but you know, you never, inevitably you're recording once or twice and you're going and you know, Tony's doing a lot of things in there. The recording engineer is really busy when they're recording. So sometimes they're just sitting there, but sometimes they're busy. And you know, we got certain cues, it's at a hunt measure X, Y, Z, you know, measure X, like, turn off, turn off the click. click. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it doesn't always go off. <laughs> uh, anyway. And uh, yeah, the third song was Riddle Me This. Yeah. Let's got to talk about that. Well, it starts off with, you know, drums, just playing a funk groove there, and, uh, Got to do something I've always wanted and put phasers on the drums at the beginning, so that's cool. Uh, the song was written by Dylan. And what is the song about? The song is about um, uh, kind of just like the paradoxes and the questions, the kind of conundrums of life. <laughs> and like kind of some of the bummers, you know. The song asks the questions in a kind of more poetical way, but it kind of asks, you know, why do beautiful things die? Uh, can you live? On Earth, and can you do? Can you live your life and not cause harm to other creatures? Is it possible? And third, is it? Is there any purpose at all? Really? What are we all doing? Are kind of my generally generalized <laughs> versions of kind of what each of those little verses is kind of talking about. And the answer is, you never know. Who doesn't know? Yeah, right. You never and the know. Course, yeah, <laughs> and the course is you don't know. You, you never know. know. Right. So it's just kind of yeah, <laughs> and it's a little it's funky. Well, that one was a lot of fun to record because there are these very specific parts to every, everything has this, these little details, you know? And we did most of this one with the kick, actually. I think until, you're right. Until the Same last line. jam. But the, the version that we released is one entire take. Yeah, one complete, one, 12 one complete 12 minute take. 12 minute take from beginning yeah. to end. And it was, yeah, it wasn't the first take. But we were really <laughs> in the moment when we got that one and nailed it, I think. I hope you guys think, think so too. I'm very proud of this one. Because it's like just very tight and crisp and then it just is like squishy for the jam, you know? Just nice and squishy and like make you do the rubber knee walk. It's hard to get like a tw like a 12 minute jam song like good in the studio because you know there's so many parts of it that need to be like bright, you know? You know, you want all the you want all the lyrics and all the chorus, and all the song part to be right, but then you also want the jam part to like be interesting. Yeah. You know? So this one, you know, was we thought it was good, and there were a couple just little little things we had to like go in and tweak. You know, like, but basically to be like, well, this is the version that has the best, most best parts, and is it are the parts that we don't like about it are those fixable enough that we can continue to work with this version of the song? That yeah. That is the one that we think is the same special to it or was emotional or had like you know the It had the vibe. It caught the vibe that we're going for, you know? And like helps push the message of the lyrics forward. So we're definitely really happy with that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It definitely took the longest. <laughs> Out of all the three. Yeah. the most involved, but I had a fun time doing it. Yeah. Yeah. It's nice to be able to get a longer kind of song on there that's a you know, studio recording, studio quality, everything like that. We spent a lot of time like shaping, like a uh, you know, recording engineer. Tony spent a lot of time like in the solos, you know, you kind of shape the solos, you make, you know, a lot of things happen live, you know, but at the same time there's a lot of like craft that goes on to just keeping a really high degree of studio quality throughout the entire um, kind of 12 minute thing. It, yeah. it sounds like it goes somewhere and does something and like, 
ends somewhere differently than we began, at least texturally, sonically. Yeah. Also, yeah. we need to shout out Alex Weinberg. Oh yeah. Yeah. He well, played the fucking keys how can we forget? on all the tracks for us on this one. He did a great Alex job. Alex came in and went ep in one epic like four or five hour session, crushed out a bunch of all three of these for us. Um, yep. We love Alex. Mm -hmm. And we will hope to play with him again real soon. It's uh, kind of fun with this album. We're gonna have we have a bunch of different keyboard players. This, you know, obviously for this EP, actually all of the tunes are by Alex or, or Alex Weinberg playing keyboards. But uh, we will have uh, another one more EP we'll do in a couple of months, and then the whole ten track album, and we shall have several different uh, keyboard players. More information about that you should stay tuned for. Uh, and we hope to in the next uh, month or two finish up these three. We're getting closer on uh, these three tunes. And we will have volume two for you uh, before too long and then the full thing. By so, the end of the year. Thank you so much for tuning in, y'all. Oh, big ups to our man Landon Fowler, producer, cameraman, video director, lawyer, representative. <laughs> Spiritual acrobat. Spiritual acrobat. <laughs> Uh, we love you, world. Take care of each other. Yeah. Stand up for what you believe in. Peace out. <laughs>